everybody, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Chris Yee. And welcome back to uh, the top 100. This is the final video. This is the epilogue. The epilogue. Where are yeah. they now? Yeah, or as I call it one time, the prologue uh, in one of my videos and got made fun of very deservedly so. Oh, you called the epilogue the prologue? Yeah, I did at one point. Ah, ah. You know what? More movies should have epilogues. You know, I'm always tired that, you know, like this big action movie and they, the bad guy gets killed and the good guy saves the... The, the, the innocent children or whatever, and then the movie, everyone's like, ah, ah, and then the movie cuts. I'm like, but what happened? It'd be mm. nice to have some little Did they little ever build the orphanage? You know? <laughs> some <laughs> movies do it. Yeah. You know, people get on the Lord of the Rings case for having that long Santa Coda. I like it, because I like to see everything, how it went back. Hmm. Can you imagine if the movie ended with, like, ring? We're done here, folks. Cut. Wrap up the set. Oh, the ring. Got it. Oh, I was, I was, I didn't catch what you were going with there. Yes. There was a ring in Lord of the Rings. That movie makes sense now. <laughs> I was so confused all these years. Alrighty, this is all, this is that Chris has showed us some degree. So, just to clarify, if you've never watched Dice Tower before, we do a top 100 every year. I believe this year was my, well, you would know. How many times have I done it? I didn't look at every single year. So I have that information. Tom has that information. Here we go. This oh, is where's mine? Where's my where's my laptop? You know, this you always know, happens you know, to cool me. Cool now. This always um, happens to me. Here you go, Mike. Here's your laptop. It's a there Lord of the Rings thing. All right. So I started in 2005. So that would be is that 17 or 18? I'm always. Guess it go far. Six, seven. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Coming through though. There we go. Oh, hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. Okay. All right. Anyhow, so for 17 years I've been doing a top 100 list, and then several years ago Z jumped in. He started in 2014. And Mike started three years ago, and a few people did them in off years, like Roy did one in 2017, mm -hmm. and then, 20, then did one last year, and so on and so forth. Um, and we also have done the People's Choice. Now, that one we've done since 2011. Okay, so a lot of data there, yeah. A lot of data here. Anyway, Chris is taking his data and mush it up and smush it up, and it's, uh, it's, it's your microphone now. Okay, yeah. So basically, what I did, uh, what I looked at for the most part was I don't have as I don't have an analytics software per se. Um, that's nice when you can have that. So I looked at this year's data amongst us in the office, and I looked at uh, for those of you who did one, uh, did a top 100 last year did a year-over-year -year analysis, a change analysis, basically. Mm. Uh, and so even though I couldn't look at all of the data from all the previous years, what I did was I just gleaned the insights that we could from... I need to share this with you, then. Yeah, I mean, I could, but once again, you know, there's... What, I, what I'm working with is in Excel, so I could figure out some stuff to see, you know, long-year trends and stuff, but... Uh, Excel? What's up? That's like so. No, what I'm saying is the analysis tools, for example, last year's analysis tools was just a more robust system. Got it, got And for it. some reason, you mm. aren't paying for like a, a, a big data analysis analytics <laughs> software. That would be, I think, a pretty gigantic waste of money. <laughs> mm. So for I did one what I, video. Right. So I did what I could with, uh, you know, within Excel itself. And so we can cut to the screen here. And I'm going to show, I'm going to discuss very briefly what I did in terms of the data. This is just a huge mess that you're seeing. Mm. Um, and it's not very zoomed in. This is everybody's top 100 from this year, including the People's Choice on the right hand column. Uh, so, to try and glean some insights across people's lists and see what were highly rated games that everybody, you know, that people crossed over on and everything, put all the data into here and tried to normalize it. That's one thing I think hopefully will be will be more interesting than last year, is that for example, Century Spice Road, I went through the data and tweaked it also. It is the same entry now as Century Golem Edition. Mm -hmm. Gloomhaven and Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is, you know, it, I, I, I tweaked the data so that we have more interesting stuff to, to kind of correlate. Does that make sense? Well, now that I've uh, played the uh, video version of Gloomhaven, they're definitely the same game. They are the same game. They actually yeah. merged them in the video. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, some people might say, oh, you know, I, I, you fudged the data. We, I very intentionally did. That's called normalizing mm. it. Um, 
The weirdest part is with the People's Choice, is the People's Choice is the only one where Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, and Gloomhaven both showed up. Okay. And so I kind of, in Pandemic Legacy and, and regular Pandemic, so Z picked Pandemic Iberia. I picked mm -hmm. Pandemic as a whole system. Someone else picked Pandemic Legacy, right? Some mm -hmm. people like pick their favorite season of Pandemic Legacy. All of that is just kind of Pandemic. Just one Pandemic. Yeah. And I've then, already moved to that on my own top 100 doing that sort of thing because it just makes, I like yeah. looking at my own data. What, one thing I struggle with my own data is sometimes the second edition and the first edition cross right. on people's choice. Yeah. Twilight Imperium 4 eventually took over Twilight Imperium 3. Mm. Yes. Descent, Mansions of Madness, because sometimes they're very different games. They are, yeah. And so sometimes you want to separate. So I think for the most part, though, anything on here that could be considered you know, debatable. It, it's not too debatable. You know, the crew, both of the crews are just kind of mushed into one. I'd like to debate on that topic, Chris. Yeah. I, uh, Please do. No. I need a cheap laptop to <laughs> hit Mike up with. <laughs> uh, and so this Ooh, is... Ooh, now we're getting even nerdier! Yeah, look at this. Yeah. So this is just a, a look still of these first two tabs. Uh, I don't know if you can see them in the stream. But anyway, the first two tabs are basically just the raw data. Mm -hmm. uh, then these are the crossovers here between Tom's list and then Z's list. And, and you see everybody's names across the top there. Uh, and so this is just to kind of show, hey, I used a VLOOKUP formula. Um, grabbing this name here did a crossover with any, you know, the blue item did a crossover with anything in the red item. The, um, you know, so same thing across everybody's lists. And then I went through in these next tabs, and I, I, this is where the actual, like, useful data is to kind of look at. All right. So what we're seeing here, and I can zoom in more on this so people in the stream can see it better, this is the number of crossovers that we had with each person. So Tom, looking at you, this uh, this row straight across, you cross over the Z 14 times, Mike 26 times, Roy 29 times, ah. Camilla 11, Wendy 15, and me 21. Oh, no, 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 keep going. You did and not mention the people's choice. Yeah. <gasps> yes, the people's champion. <laughs> So what you're saying is, Z Garcia, not voice of Z the people. Z is not even. As a matter of fact, Z is in second to last place. Right. In crossing over with the people. Oh, Garcia! How the <laughs> mighty have fallen. <laughs> Why do you hate the people so? Well, Mike, I'm, what do you I'm have not, against the people, Z? Mike, you are only third for people, and we Look, have, let's we not get you. caught up in the details here, Tom. Let's just focus actually, on Z. Actually, I'm surprised, actually, and. Uh, that Roy is as high over crossover with I the people. I am too. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think that, and people in the chat have been mentioning this. Roy has probably the most representation of four X and troops on a map and those confrontational type games that I think sure. are highly represented on the people's choice list, but aren't necessarily on a lot of other people's. Mm -hmm. Say, you know, me and Wendy's, for example. Right. Um, but then, you know, Wendy and I have a lot of the other Euro game. No one else's list has Brass Birmingham on it. So it's fun to kind of see that we all do crossover with the People's Choice list on a lot of different things. Yeah, no one is less than than 15% there. 17 is the lowest, which is still pretty high. Right. Um, this is an interesting question from Bonnie Crew. Uh, I don't know if we have access to this answer, but uh, they're asking how many different games were there altogether represented across all of our list? Do we have that information? 450, I think is what it was. Wow, a, a, a of, of just this, like this year, right? So 450 out of out of a possible 800. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, seven people in the office and then the people's choice list. Okay. Um, so the second highest crossover is actually me and the people. Who is the third highest crossover? It looks like Camilla and Z. With 34. 34 there. Ah, yeah. I see what you're doing here. You're just looking. And then Chris next and Wendy is, is, is the highest with 56, right? Yeah. So what's that? Taking people's choice out of it. Mm -hmm. So we have obviously Chris and Wendy, then Camilla and Z. Mm -hmm. Looks like the next highest is Mike and me. You and, you and I with 26. No, no, no. Roy and me. You and Roy with 29, right? And then you. So you, right. me, and Roy should start our own show. That's correct. Roy, <laughs> get out from behind over there. Let's get going here. Chris, you're out. All right. You know, it's funny, though. This data does not necessarily line up in my head because I'm, I'm thinking if I have a game that I like, mm -hmm. who would probably else like it? It depends on the game because I'm an Omni gamer. Yeah, you're, you're But I think I would place. cross over with Camilla a lot more because there are a lot of games I'm like, ooh, and she says, ooh, and I'm like, okay. Now, now I don't, I don't want to speak for Camilla because she's not here right now. Uh, she wanted to be. But she, had a she meeting, has, sorry. maybe you've heard her say this, too. She has mentioned that that she thinks that her 
crossovers are probably going to grow over time because she'll have more of a chance to play with more. It's going to happen. You know we what play I mean? so much together here. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. I, think I will make the wild call that here next year. Chris and Wendy's crossovers will be less than 56. See, and I wonder about that, mm. right? Because we, you just have more exposure to more different types of games. Uh, and and uh, Camilla has gotten a chance to play a lot of games with Z because mm -hmm. the timing just has worked out that way. But also the same games that interest you and Mike and uh, do also do interest her. So that yeah. would be kind of fun to see just changes over time. Right. Um, yeah, so I agree. Try not to speak for Camilla or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But I still think I have the most crossovers. I know you have 125 to my 116, but then again, you have 56 with Wendy. Right. So what I did? Oh, you 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 anticipated that? Yeah. I did, right? <laughs> so this column right, or so this row right here, total, uh, is taking a look at the total of everything except for the People's Choice. This is just kind of within the mm -hmm. office. So Tom, you had 116 total crossovers with other people in the office. Z had 94, so on and so forth across this row here, and then this next row is. Is uh, in accounting speak less colon means minus whatever thing, so minus the highest crossover amount. So taking out you and Roy's crossover, taking out uh, Z and Camilla's crossover, taking out Mike with uh, Tom with you. So looking here, you can see that Tom, you still have the highest crossover, eliminating the the one person that you cross over with the most. Taking out even Wendy and I's crossovers I'm with each other. I'm loving these numbers. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to look at, right? So taking out the 56 I had with Wendy, I still had 69 crossovers amongst other people in the office. Uh, and then you can see here that Wendy's is the most distinct list from other folks. Of, Wendy you know, also course, has the least crossover mine. with Z. Yeah. But also Roy, almost. <laughs> and that's the lowest crossover, right, of any of them is with Wendy and Z. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also Chris and Z. Yeah, mine is... Pretty low, too, yeah. actually. Oh, and that's the other thing I wanted to mention. So the funny thing, too, is that out of these 100 games that we're talking about, crossovers, and we're doing all this analysis, that does not speak to our general tastes because our general games that we like is way bigger than 100. 100 sounds like a ton of games, but it's still All right, next year we will sample. all do our top 500. Top 500, here we go. All right, we'll be at, at number 500. <laughs> well, I, you know, here's the thing, and people ask us, a few years in my data, I have gone farther than 100. I believe last year I went to 250, mm. and a, a couple years I went to 258. It's so much work. It is. So much this work. This year I got to 100, and I was like, I'm done. I mean, actually, I went to 157, but that's not because I w of anything other than I was just shrinking and shrinking i got to 100 added numbers in and moved them around I did so that. 157 yeah. was basically my pool of could be in the top 100 mm -hmm. when i go beyond that also 87 and 88 are already kind of like ah, yeah yeah once you get to 200s it don't matter right i right. did really very doesn't. similar i think i had a pool of somewhere in 170 range that i you know was like considering into the but what do you can what do you call this in accounting numerical speak the fact that I have probably, so I don't know why I played like 8,000 games or something. So I, I mm. still say I have two, 3,000 sevens. I have a lot of sevens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not going to be in the top 100 ever. But they're games I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is that group called? I don't, I, don't, I don't know what you would necessarily call that. But it's, it's the, the general idea is that those sevens that you like could be for Mike a two. Mike could despise every single one of those games, and it's just not data that's represented in the small sample size we're looking at of the top 100. It would be interesting if we went through the top 100s and said how many of those games I dislike. Dislike, yeah. Like, sure. just, just not even rating them, just like, I don't like that. How many on each list I would dislike the games? Because I know when me and Mike and, and Z did it, I, I specifically said, right. I just like that game, but it's not a ton of them. Right. No, I would guess my 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 guess is that it would be less than ten percent of games that I just actively dislike that show up on an, right anybody's it's list. Just a really. guess. Though yeah. I have another five to ten percent of games on Z's list where I would go, I haven't played it yet. That is also <laughs> that is that is true. All right. So now let's look over at uh, this column here is crossover values, right? So what I did was I assigned, uh, or wait, no, no, this is. Oh yeah, so you can kind of look through. Um, I'm debating 
Right, someone asked in the chat earlier, could could this become public? Could we post this somewhere? I don't have a problem with that. I mean, okay. we, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, but I don't see why. Let people have data. Yeah, yeah. And so you can see here, uh, any given any given game. Tom, you picked Hadara. Uh, it was also on Z's list at 51 and nobody else's list. Mm -hmm. But I know that, for example, a few people, I think Mike likes the game. Which one? Hadara. Hadara. Yeah. I like that game. Right, but it didn't make the top 100. Didn't make the top 100. Right, and that's why even I wouldn't put too much faith in just all these numbers as representing the true taste between, you know, all of us. Um, Unless it's a number that shows up in a lot of people's top 100s. In that case, you can say it's fairly well liked. Yeah. Yeah. So agreed. I don't know what data you have here. This is all like Tom and I are being exposed to this for the first time here on the stream. No, second time for you. Second time. I mean, second time for me. Oh, Sorry. you have seen it. So do we have like information as far as like the game that had the most crossed over among everybody? And okay, so we're coming. We'll, to we'll that. get there. We'll yeah. get, that's what people want to hear. Well, sure. They're not so here we're for saving that. We're saving that for the yeah, <laughs> for the for the epilogue. <laughs> And so, someone in the chat asked earlier and said, do you have, um, what about crossover and unique games that aren't on anybody's list? And that's what, uh, that's mm. one of the things that you can glean from here. Mm. So this is where those numbers were pulled from, how many crossovers each person had with whatever pr other person. Uh, and over here, though, is the unique value column. So okay. you look at uh, Raccoon Tycoon, mm -hmm. and so you can see, hey, if this blue cell area here, and maybe it's not showing up. So anyway, if these cells here, have no value in them whatsoever, then put in a value of one, if not put in a zero. Mm. This is a unique one for Tom. Raccoon Tycoon, nobody else had it, so that's a one. Okay. And then this cell right Why? here. 39 uniques, huh? Yeah, so this cell here is summing up, yeah, how many unique games there were. So 39 games out of your top 100 were only on your list. Correct. Yes, and I fully, and some of them I fully expect that. That's like, interesting. Mm -hmm. I want to see this for everybody. And then, so there's two columns. <laughs> There's unique, and then there's with the people. So this ah. one is unique amongst just us in the office, because uh -huh. I thought that would be kind of fun to break out too. So seven of your games that nobody else had on the list is on the people's choice. Is on the people's ah. choice. Take a good example. There's role player. Role player. You can see it there. You can see it right role there. Role player. Yeah. My, my 99 is 61 for the people, but no one else here had to get to put a much superior. I like role player. You it's don't. Not, no. it's not <laughs> my I, actually, mind. I think almost everyone in the office likes yeah, it. Yeah, I do. It's like just role not. Player. It just, in the top 100. I think it, the year it came out, it may have made it been on my top 100, but uh, it's fallen a little bit. Okay, so here we go. So this is Z. Used to be the voice of the people. Look at that. 42. I like that when you include the people. It's still 42. 42. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, yeah. So almost half of his list There's is no only on his list. Yeah. Oh, you got our echo right there. Time well, bomb Everyone right. plays our echo. I mean, yeah. Uh, so then going over to you, Mike. Wow, mine is even higher. That's almost, right. You just criticized Z. No, it wasn't, I wasn't criticizing. I was surprised. It was definitely a criticism. It was a criticism. But, but for me, for... it shows a bold <laughs> individualism. <laughs> for Z, not so much. For oh, me, actually, bold individualism. When we're done with this, I want to slide up and see the highest game we have that's not a crossover. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, let's go through that for sure. So 45 and 41. Woo! Okay, look at this. Roy, Roy. 44 and 39. <laughs> Nice there try, Roy. You're not quite as individual as me. 39 and 37 for Camilla. Mm-hmm. Ho! Wait, what's going on? What? Oh, we got all kinds of things going so, on here. So, I put in some extra information, right? This mm. is Wendy's Unique Games. <laughs> like that no Chris. No yeah. Chris. <laughs> but, so, ignoring me, mm -hmm. knowing where Wendy and I crossed over, she had 60 unique games on the list. Here. All right. Remember that number is 60, because I want to see now how it works with you. All right. Okay. And then coming over here to me. So, Sans Wendy. Sans Wendy. <laughs> I had 59 unique games okay. that were on nobody else's wow. list. That's interesting. And 51 with the people. I'm feeling less individualistic yeah, than you, these you're, days. You're, uh, you're just a bandwagon jumper, is what <laughs> this is telling me. No, 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 no. I'm a trendsetter. Oh, a trendsetter. Okay, well, that's a different way to look at it. And then over here, the People's Choice. Um, you, they had 18 unique games that were on nobody else's list. That's interesting. Okay. So, you know what? Wow. Actually, that's, that is not surprising to me. Yeah. I figure of the games that are most popular, people aren't going to, by very nature, have a unique game that's yeah. probably not in our yeah. list. What are the games? Let's so go through those. So, here's the unique games that are on the, on the people's list and not 
and of any of ours. Castles of Burgundy, um, remember how we mentioned I normalized the data. So I changed this title Pandemic Base. Mm -hmm. That's because Pandemic Legacy was higher than Pandemic on the People's Choice list. I called Pandemic Legacy the higher one. I call that Pandemic. That's the crossover. Yeah, all these yellow ones I'm counting as if they were on someone else's yeah, list. Yeah, that's kind of the, what I'm thinking okay. about, too. Sure. Okay, so Castles of Burgundy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grey Western Trail. Mm -hmm. Well, man, I thought, Chris, you would have Castles of Burgundy on your list, but okay. Me? No, I'm I'm very okay with that. I think Mike and I are in the same camp. Yeah, it's like it's fine. It's like a seven ish. Yeah, yeah well, wait till you play this deluxe version. You all change your mind. Now it's uh, a plastic seven. Um, <laughs> all right, just one could make it for me on any given Sunday. I love just one. It's just for some reason it is not broken into that top one hundred. But I like that's one of the party games that I will. I will say play. that if my kids. Um, uh, Ruby and Violet did their top 50 this year, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm almost positive Just One was on it. They okay. love that game. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. Now, this I next thought one Roy would have Star Wars Rebellion. Is that uh, on your list? This, uh, one was a, this one was an error. It was an we, error. We Roy, talked about yeah. this. So how Roy did his list this year was he did the Pub Meeple system, which he hadn't done before. And by putting all of his ranked games from BGG into Pub Meeple and then comparing them, that one game didn't go through. Well, what, what, what would? What do you think? Just it's in the top twenty. In the top twenty. Yeah, yeah. It's like this is a game that he had. All right, that's uh, Aaron Data. In <clears throat> fact, let's shut the video down now. That's because everything's We're doing it. Thanks, folks, for coming. Yeah. Agricola. That's an easy one. Caverna exists for me. Otherwise, Agricola would probably still be in my top one hundred. Right. Yeah. Patchwork. That's one I don't. I've never gotten. The absolute. Uh, I like Patchwork. It's a great fine, game. Yeah. It's a good but game. People but people love it, and I'm thinking, why would you pick Patchwork over Baron Park yeah. over all Wild, these other Wildcat. ones? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's, that's what it is. It's it's a good game, but it's not in my top 100. Gaia it, Project, I've not played. It fits a nice a nice niche for so many people. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Gaia Project. Um, yeah, it's an immense great game, but I don't really love it that much. And Wendy and I would probably be the closest people. That might have a chance yeah. of putting. I'd it on like this. it. I give it a seven, but it ain't yeah. making my top 100. Yeah, exactly. Right, uh, Calico. I'm calling it now. Next year, Calico is not in people's choice. You think? I think Cascadia, Cascadia has slammed it, it, which someone pointed out to me because when I reviewed Cascadia, I said I don't think people really get into this because of Calico already existing. Yeah, that <laughs> was a big error. <laughs> well, it's just yeah. It's I, I think. You know, a lot of people like expansive rather than, than restrictive, but I still like Calico a lot. It's still you would definitely in my top two hundred. There's no question. It could even be my top one fifty. Um what is it? Someone Code says Code Code someone says Star Wars Rebellion is the hanging chad of these results. It is, yes, correct. <laughs> Codenames, I think people have played it so much they love yeah. it. I and like it. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, I think it's slowly you're seeing it kind of mm -hmm. drop over years. Stone Age is a really huge surprise to me that it, it is. is even on the people's choice. It I like really, it. Really I think is. it's fine. I just can't like. How did it make it? My thing is that there are so many worker placement games in that weight that I feel like to me have really just exceeded over what Stone Age does. I think that. There's a couple of things. The theme is very appealing to a lot of people, mm -hmm. and and it was it has a lot of nostalgia. I think for some people, this was their kind of entryway into the hobby. So I think it has a lot of good feelings behind it. Yeah. But I, I have there are other games I'd rather play. Uh, Terra Mystica. We saw Guy Project See, already Guy higher Project. up. Catan. This one surprised me that it made it high up there because I know there's a lot of people who don't like it, but this is. I'd like to speak briefly. I like our people's choice I agree. on how we do it because we only allow positive voting. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you put it on the list and then we add them all and whichever ones get the most votes make it. So you can't bring any games down. Right. Mm. You can't give a negative vote. Sure. And that's why Catan, if you go to Board Game Geek, Catan is not in the top 100 or even close to it right. because a lot of people go in there and rate it very lowly. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, and that's gonna, and that also though means that games that have are very esoteric, like Gloomhaven and and uh, Twilight Struggle, will make it higher because the people who don't like them will never play them to begin with. Yeah. Right. But uh, a pop, but popular games can also make it on this list, and the People's Choice has a lot of popular games. This is a, a top 100. I love Board Game Geek, but <laughs> our top 100 is vastly superior, in my opinion. I agree. Because it. Feels like a. I think it's more wider. representative of what people actually play. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah, one would hope. Yeah. It's, I think it's, we cast a wider net, as oddly, as strange as that may sound. Yeah. Cartographers is a game I really enjoy, yep. 
But I know that people love it. It is one of the most popular rolling rights out it there. It is. Yep. It is. It's got some legs for sure. And I think for us, so I don't think this affects the people, but it affects us. I think we, for I don't know about y'all, but like if I'm like I'm gonna put a couple rolling rights in my top 100, of course, I'm only gonna put a couple. Yeah. Does that happen? You might say, eh, this game kind of replaces this one for me. Yes. People's choice, that won't happen to. Yeah. That's correct. That is correct. Yeah, no, that's that's true. I, when I tend to think of my verb and verb games, just to, to make Tom, you know, sweat over there, because you love when I say that, <clears throat> I definitely, I don't want to have too many of them represented on my list. I think inevitably, if you do, uh, if you do a top 100 or, or a big ranking like this, you will, uh, to use Z's word, you will massage your list. Mm -hmm. uh, so Roy this year did just the straight pub meeple thing, just the, the rankings. He compared two things, and he just went with it. Z mm -hmm. did the same thing, um, and so that's kind of interesting. But it turns out that it's not that wildly different from if they were to just pick them, mm. you know, handpick them themselves. Yeah. But inevitably, you do some massaging. Yeah, I did choices. it this year, but I always go back then and go, wait a minute, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I move some yeah, stuff around. Yeah, I do too. All okay, right. so Lahav is my biggest unique that's not with the people. That's clear. I'm, I like it the most here in the office. Yeah. Then, then Beyond, Beyond the, the Sun, sun is space yours. Space Base saddens me that none of you have that. In your top 100 space base I, I is amazing. I don't have quite the love for it that you do. But. Yeah, it's it's neat. Right. It's great. Beyond the Sun, I think this will be the last. I think it might crack the people's top 100 next year, depending on how widely available it is. That's not, a though. big part of it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's not the most beautiful game, so I don't know. That sometimes can affect things. Looking at Z's here, his first unique game uh, is both unique to the office and the people in general. Mm -hmm. Paper Tales. I do like Paper Tales. It used to be in my top 100. Yeah. And that's what I mean by stuff like it's it, these lists. The Blue Moon Legends, which is in no one's top 100 mm -hmm. except these. <laughs> you know, stuff like this is just not, you know, Ooh, uh, all of I'm those. still mind boggled that that's your top. That's, that's amazing to me. Outlet is a fantastic game. It's a game. very good game. And I'm I have, fantastic. in the last three or four of our events, whether it's the cruise or. or um, Retreats, retreats. I've had people ask me to teach it to them, and it's gone over very well. So I, I really think this is a game that. More people than not would like it if they had a chance to play it. And Blue Moon City. Blue Moon City, oh, yeah. Blue Moon City's on your list, yeah. My, yeah. So I have two games in my top ten that are unique to my list. All right, going over here to Roy. So Zaya. Roy has three in his top ten. That are I'm actually surprised list. that that didn't make the people's actually, choice. Actually, War of the Ring is higher. Oh, what is it? No, War, War of the Ring is with us. That's oh, you're right, yeah. So, yeah, right? yeah the no, ring. No, 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 the people, the people had right. it at 98. Yeah, barely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, barely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I like War of the Ring a lot. I just don't play it as much these mm -hmm. days. Same thing with TI4. That, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons for that. Dune is another one I think not enough people play it for it to make the people's choice. The, the, ri classic the original Dune. Dune, yeah. Yeah. Well, or, oh. Gosh, Dune Imperium, look at that. So sad. So close. Oh, to almost being a complete crossover. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about Wendy right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Camilla, so her highest Ecos. is Ecos, First Continent. That's still, I mean, when she told me she loved Ecos, I was like, oh, wow. I mean, I like it, mm -hmm. but I had actually been debating on should I keep it in the library because mm -hmm. I didn't know if anyone was playing it. Well, yeah, she likes Ecos. It's staying in now. And she likes that uh, Via Magic game, which is essentially Augusta. Yeah. So I think she must really like that, me that kind of that bingo mechanism. New York Zoo. Huh. I'm feeling sort of like a flash, flash forward. We're doing a uh, catch a palooza on that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she's got yeah, she's got quite a few. See if Legends in could have made mine. And Final Girl, I bet is knocking on the door of yours. Final Girl, I can tell you right now, will be in my top 100. One of the funny but things, but she did is, hers after you. That's yes, the only reason. The timing not difference is kind of funny. Yeah, I, it, Final Girl, like I'm trying to remember the timing of it. Had I. It came out almost right after almost the top right 100. right after the top 100. I had not had really a chance to dig into it. Because you finalize your top 100 list end of December, early right. January. We just did ours. It was my number one ago. solo game of 2021. I think you said I felt like that I you were still playing I wanted to play more yeah. of it, yeah. All right, going over to Wendy here. Uh, her first unique game is Boon Lake. Uh, Boon Lake. Boon Lake. Now, not even you are on that one. That's still one that's kind of a hole in my collection. I haven't played it. It's one of the... I have not either. It's one of the Fister ones I haven't, mostly because I look at it and I go, whew, that seems like a lot to learn. Doesn't that one seem like extra complex compared to some of the other ones? There's there's a lot. Wendy finds it very intuitive to a degree that I don't. Mm -hmm. I think it, it has a little bit too much in it. 
but mm -hmm. also it is very fun. It's very yeah. good. Um, and then over to me, my first unique game that's on no one else is a broom, <laughs> broom service. Broom yeah. service. Yeah, no shock it. there. That's, that's a game I champion for sure. Yeah, I even like um, Witch's Brew better than Broom Service. I've been like Witch's Brew. No yeah. one, no one other than Mike thinks that Broom Service kills Witch. <laughs> and then I Las Vegas Royale also has a unique one in my top ten here. And what's the highest people's choice that's on no one's list? Uh, the Castle Burgundy. Oh yeah, Castle we already Burgundy. went through that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's those ones there. So now uh, you were talking about like value of crossovers. So before we go here to this tab called points, uh, what I want to show you is in the raw data here, mm -hmm. I'll zoom in a little bit on this, you see that every pick that was a number one pick on somebody's list, there's a, there's a designated point value. And so the way we did this is a number one pick on anyone's list gets 200 points. 200 points. Number two, you get 199 points, and it's just a, uh, a decreasing list all the way down to the bottom until the number 100 pick on someone uh, for someone gets 101 points. This is uh, something I insist on, actually, because I don't like the 100 to 1 because it makes game one 100 times better right. than exactly. the last one. In fact, when we do our point scoring for the Dice Tower Awards, so we're 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 voting on dice tower awards right now. Right now, yeah. I do a very similar thing. It's a four, three, two, the points for you. You can pick your top three, and again, it just bothers me. It bothers me in Euro games when they do this. Like you get three points, I get one. You just got three times as many points as me, mm -hmm. which can matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a math term for all this? Um, you're the math teacher. Yeah, you're the math teacher. Uh, yeah, they 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 force you to teach. Algebra all the time. I would yeah. rather have learned more about statistics. Statistics, yeah. There, yeah. I think there's something. It's like normalizing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's that. It's that it's exact not exponential, idea. right? I mean, if you think about it, even 200 to 101 is probably not the best because I played 7,000 games, so my top one should be worth 7,000 points, right. and then the, the 100 should be 6,900. Right, 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 right. But, but that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. There's a degree to which you you, you could tweak with these numbers, these number of points here, so much. I, I I at first was like, what if the you know what if it was fifty to hundred and there was these like all these decimal places you walked by and said do two hundred to one hundred one and I said you're Done. the boss. Mm -hmm. Done. That's easier. Much easier. Yeah. So I, I, I just need to pause it. <laughs> Jason Dunham, there's a Castle of Burgundy <laughs> deluxe edition on Game Found right now. You can back it. Yes. I, yeah. I, I think that's a joke, I'm, but in case not. Yeah, it might be because Loopy comes. Yeah, I think this is a joke. Okay, anyway. One we're being, kin uh, dream. All we're right. being trolled. So now let's go to the point value, assessing how uh, how many times each game came across All right, here on everybody's go. list here. Here we go. This so, is the definitive best this games of all time. people's choice. <laughs> This, in, this one here is going to include people's choice. The next tab is just us within the office, because I All wanted right. to do a small little comparison here. So, um, Dune Imperium. Dune Imperium okay. was on seven of the eight lists. Wow. <laughs> so there is no eight crossover. No. And I'm not even sure we are close to that, because... Z number one, and Wendy was not a fan of Dune Imperium, I guess. Um, and I know Z's never going to put Gloomhaven on his. Right. Right. So, and Dominion, Mike is not going to put that on his. So, no, I think I, it's a fine game, but it's not going to the top. Right. So, I don't think there is a chance for an eight way crossover unless a new game comes out. Now, sure. I would say this. I would say this. I think the reason Sleeping Gods is not on the three that is not there might be because they haven't played it enough yet. I, and I suspect that that's the case. That, Chris, Wendy, and Camilla I believe, have not really ooh. played it very much. Yeah. I barely dabbled, barely right. dipped my big toe mm -hmm. into it, and so I think that's the I closest think that has a chance. Get. So yeah, I'd be curious to see what happens in this next year. Mm -hmm. um, Dominion Viticulture, A Feast for Odin is also very high up, and mm -hmm. it helps that as number two on, on two people's lists. Yep. But one of the things I want to point out with this, with this point system when you look at this, a lot of people complain that Wendy and I's picks are, many of them are very similar, especially the highest up ones. But that's not going to skew, for example, A Feast for Odin, way higher than it really should be per se. Yeah. Right. You're still looking at these, you know, these other games here. Uh, and, also, and I so put Feast for Odin very high because it's an amazing game. It yep. is. Yep. It is, yeah. Mike is the is the low. But No, I'm not the, the low. The lower the three people but who didn't put it on this, their Chris, list at all. We can average them, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the column over here on the right is average points. Mm -hmm. All right, sort it. All I right. want to see it. So... Uh, oh, but average, okay, average does not work. Is there a way to sort it with uh, two plus? Yeah, that's actually what I'm doing right here. Blam. 
So the highest average rating on games that have at least uh, two uh, that are on at least two people's lists. The others was number uh, was num. Th this throws me off, right? Because Wendy and I both put um, we both put uh, Brass Birmingham as our number one game. So I thought that it would be this highest rated up one here, right? The others but being the number two. The people brought you down. <laughs> but the people. <laughs> Yeah, but the people's average. Yeah, but that the people brought down the average on it. Mm -hmm. Now this is really interesting, in terms of the crew seems to be the the because there's a more normalization of four votes. Yeah, there's four votes, but all four of us put it very high up. Tom, uh, Wendy, myself, and the people all have it within the top twenty. That's some, a some really of us have vision as to. The fact that this is not a flash in the pan game, but it is here to stay. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> That's an immensely high average, right? To be on that many people's lists. Um, but let's look at the fours then, like the ones that there's four. Because obviously twos, if there's any twos, yeah, do, there you go. Yeah, let's do four and higher. Uh, so the first one, yeah, the crew, Everdale is the next one. That is one that Wendy and I have not played. And I suspect wow. we'd really like it. But yeah, yeah that's that's one of those like strong sevens for me. Mm. So it's not like I would bring it down. It just didn't make my top 100. Yeah, no, I like it. Pandemic. If see, Pandemic actually might be higher if I hadn't decided to take Legacy games out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because yeah. Pandemic Legacy Zero is easily one of my favorite game experiences. Mm -hmm. I just took them out because I'm not going to keep saying every year this game is my favorite when I don't play it. Right. Okay. And uh, and you know I I kept it on because. I like the general pandemics, and I kind of kept that as just one little item. No, no, no. I, and I think a lot I of us like do that. I like what you that. did there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I mean, Dominion has great average. I mean, you look at these ones, and they're you know, these are solid games. These yeah. are such solid picks. Um, so let's let's see. Let's go back to uh, let's include all the data again. Let's go back to really quick to total points descending. Uh, this is at 190 time magnification. I'll tell you though, you look at that top 10. It's a uh -huh. pretty solid. It's actually not too far off from the top 10 yeah. on board game. I mean, that's D. a pretty solid top um, 10 again. There is there. also not, it's it's a little skewed towards newer games, but Dominion is 2008. Yeah. Five Tribes is 2012, I think, or it's somewhere, maybe 15. Viticulture, yeah. Feast. I mean, yeah, I mean, there was. Within... I mean, there's nothing. What's the newest Sleeping game? Sleeping Gods. On this list, it's uh, Imperi or Dune Imperium. Dune Imperium and then Sleeping Gods, right? Yeah, Although there's... Sleeping Gods is actually newer than Dune Imperium, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because you look at Gloomhaven and the game's several years old now. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels still kind of like a brand new heavy hitter, but. <laughs> You know, four and or five Marvel years. Marvel United's a bit of a rising star there. It is. It's at number 12, yeah. Um, Marvel Champions, not as much, but I think that's because... Does, does Marvel Champions have a higher average? I think it does, I bet, right? 175, yeah. So, I mean, it's got a higher average than even some of the games in the highest positions. Right, because... Marvel Champions for me is not nearly as high as it didn't make my top 100. So it's kind of a weird average thing because, again, this would be amazing data if we went all the way through every game we've ever played. Sure, sure. Which oh, we gosh. will never do. No, yeah. Too much work. Someone is asking, uh, why didn't you assign a small amount of points to anyone who didn't put it on their list, like 10 points? Then your averages would mean more. I don't know what that means because I'm not intelligent enough. To you, could, you, you would average it across... Um, eight entries rather than so like my formula mm. here is just averaging the total number of points over the number of people mm. whose list it was on and that's because this is the data that we have to work with this right? is what board wanna... game geek does they add in a bunch of dummy ratings mm -hmm. to all their games it's a it's a hidden number we don't know I'm, we don't know what it i'm is. guessing it's a couple hundred or a hundred of they i think they give a five, a bunch of five ratings. That normalizes the game. This would actually work better, I think, to give out all of them a 100 or... I, th I think Maybe, 10 would yeah. be too low. Right. But, know, I, I don't know. I might debate if we want to kind of refine the formula over time, but, you know, I, I find that that might be more fair, so to speak, but this is interesting mm. that amongst these people's lists, how highly regarded was it among these five people, right? Mm -hmm. These averages are astoundingly high, I think, right? Like, Dominion is... Ridiculously high, and so it's just it's just looking at a different piece of information. Well, one of the things here that's interesting also, Dune Imperium, you could argue there's groupthink because we all played yeah, sure. Dune Imperium together. 
Gloomhaven, I don't think any of us played it with each other. You and I played a little bit of Jaws of the Lion. That's true, we did. Okay, yeah. so there's that. But, but I did play you're with right. Roy. Yeah. Um, and you guys didn't play with yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. And I think Z has mostly played solo. Dominion also, there's not any, there's no group think on Dominion. No. Because we all this this is a game we played back in the and day. Dominion is not as far out of my top 100 as you might think. I mean, I have a lot of esteem for mm -hmm. Dominion. I just, it, it's not in my top 100. I like Dominion a lot. And, and Sleeping Gods, to be fair, also, even though it's all it came through the office, there's a lot of excitement together. For the most part, everyone took it home and played it separately. You played a little bit together. I played, the, the whole campaign I played was a solo one. And I yeah. took it home and played it with my kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, now, what, a comparison point I want to just bring up here is this is the points for everybody, including the people's vote. Chris, just did you intend to in this... keep the 4-plus filter on, I'm guessing that means? Um, it's not on anymore, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I reset it back to the standard. Yeah, that's because... that total points. That's why nothing that's below 4-plus will make it there. Got it. Right. Uh, so, let's see. Going and comparing to just us in the office really quick. Drake is saying it's interesting that none of these are anyone's favorites, rather consensus really good games. That's confusing. No, these are our favorites. What are you talking about? That's the whole point of this. Well, our favorite no, games. of these top ten, are any of these our number one game? No, absolutely not, because we're all going to have such distinct taste for right. each other. Right, right, My right. favorite game, Brass Birmingham, is on nobody else's list. Yeah. Um, your favorite it's game. It's in my like, top 6,000? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and so, uh, Mike, your favorite game, Dwellings, Dwellings. of Eldervale, yeah. is on nobody else's list. No one list. else's list, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, you know, oh, yeah, wait, our... Lahab is not it was in Roy's list. list. It's definitely on my list. Oh, it's I'm sorry, Roy's you're right, list. you're right. Yeah. Yeah, What's your number on one? List. Oh, Marvel Champions. Yeah, Marvel yeah, Champions. yeah. Yeah, right, and that, and that, that is some crossover, but not yeah. everybody's going to like everything. Sure, I think, sure. I think that shows just the general broad appeal that yeah. games like Dune Imperium, Gloomhaven, Dominion have. Right. Now, comparing with us uh, oh, just really within quick. the office. Of these top ten, how many of them are crowdfunded? Because I think that plays into this, too, how widely available these games are. I think only oh, one, only right? Only for people. Only, only for people. Only Sleeping Gods, I think, is is the only crowdfunded game. No, the original Paladins, Paladins was, was crowdfunded, and I Raiders guess. was crowdfunded. Yeah, um, I guess. Chronicles okay. of Crime, wasn't Chronicles of Crime crowdfunded? I don't know. I do think that that plays remember. into this, maybe, more than you might think, though, well, we get the We get the games now, though. I'm, I don't know that there's as much of a distinction anymore. Because right. right. a lot of crowdfunded games do become retail. They do. Especially when they're this... Viticulture yeah. was a crowdfunded game. And I, now I almost don't even think of it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, taking out the people's vote, just to kind of see our scores here in the office and compare, mm. you'll notice that... Dominion falls to number four and because a Aquatica, Aquatica comes out of nowhere. Wow. A lot of us in the office here really, uh, yeah, I mean, it's all kind of middle, mm -hmm. and then it's very high up on Roy's list, but, yeah. you know, that's just representation on a lot of lists it's here. It's a really good game. Yeah. Uh, whereas Aquatica is 13. 13 otherwise. So, let's see, anything different uh, jump Gizmos up? Gizmos well? jumps up. Gizmos jumps up. Way up. The av yeah. That was only on the A-team's lists, which is very interesting. And it was on all four of ours. Right. So then, let's uh, really quick jump here to uh, Tom, Mike, Z, right? This was your guys' list, just comparing your numbers. Highest okay. rated game, Dune Imperium. Mm -hmm. Wingspan, which didn't appear on any of the A-team lists. Yeah. Which, by the way, and I am I am getting really tired because I'm going to say this now, because it will likely be a comment on this video, and people go, that just goes to show you Wingspan's overrated. It's not. It is not no, overrated. I am still mind-boggled that people keep saying this every time. The game has sold millions of copies at yes. this point. Right. I still really like it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of use myself as a negative example here. And I think I joke a bit about the crew because I think it's a fine game. You know, the, this whole forgotten in five years—that's hyperbole, right? But, but I, 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 what? I, do, I do have an underlying thing that I don't think it's going to be anyway. <laughs> People push back on Wingspan, and that's kind of what I, I feel this this desire sometimes to push back against the crew because it's so popular. I'm like, yeah, it's a good game, but come on. I think that's what people are doing about Wingspan, but I have to be honest with myself. The crew is a very, very, very good game, and Wingspan is a very, very good There's game. There's a Kickstarter going on right now where people can buy extremely over... Well, I guess it ended, but extremely overpriced upgrade pieces yes. for Wingspan. <laughs> and this happens all the time. If you go to... And you bought seven. Etsy. <laughs> If you go to Etsy, yeah. the number one, one of the top five games of looking for upgrades is Wingspan. Yes. And Which is so funny because what comes in the box is already 
fantastic. Anyway, it's, it's incredible. And it's, at, it's in Target now. It's in Barnes & Noble. Look, you get over it. Wingspan's here to stay. It's not going <laughs> anywhere. Now, that being said, I'll be curious... We, we had a three-way crossover on these games. Mm -hmm. I'll be curious which ones stay. Um, like, specifically, I'll be curious where Vagrant Song ends up. Well, because it's a, it's a campaign game, and I think that that's part of an issue. But I can tell you, I still haven't played through the whole thing. I still hold it in very high esteem. Um, but right, you're yeah. right. You are right. So then we look at the ones um, that are not on people's list. So real quick, Cthulhu Death May Die, I thought was okay. Five Tribes, I think, is okay. Everdell, I like more than okay, but and Abyss, they're like strong games for me, but they wouldn't make my top 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only one that me and Z crossover Mike does in is Targi. Which I like. I like Targi, but it's not going to get anywhere near my top 100. And then um, It's just not. I don't play a lot of two-player-only games. Speaking on Z's behalf, I know he likes Scythe. Yes. I know he likes Viticulture. Mm -hmm. Gloomhaven, he was not a huge fan of. Near and Far, he liked, I think, but not as much as we did. Yeah. Vindication, he said, was decent. Oh, he played it? Okay. Yeah, we did for Catch a Palooza. Oh, we did, right, yeah. Right, Raiders right, right. of the North Sea, I'm not sure he's played. And Lords of Hellas, he would not like. He wouldn't I like it. Sure. I don't think. Oh, wait, there's two more from Mike. Wait. Yeah, well, I'm Oh, the, I see. Because this is all just Hadar, you points. already mentioned that one. Mm -hmm. What's your reasoning for Empires of the North? I like it. Not enough. It's a seven, so it's not going in, you know, to my hundred. And Nidavellir, we're still shocked that Z did not like us. I, if, this, though, is definitely one where Z sat down. We were all like, this is the greatest game ever. I think we blew it there. Because <laughs> we did. We really I did. I was so sure that not only that he was going to like that game, but that it was going to be in his top ten for the year. Like, I, I, I thought, also thought that. he was going to <laughs> love it. And so we built this thing up to him. Yeah. And uh, it had no chance to live up to what we had built it up to. We, so, we, we, we've learned from that experience. Matter of fact, now we're first, like, Z, this is trash. The first time we played it, I was like immediately saying, oh, this Z's going to love this game. The I, first time we, we played it. We all said that. So anyway, yeah. Carlos, thank you for the thank super chat. Thank you for the chat. super chat. <laughs> Just when he couldn't love us more. Mm -hmm. Spreadsheets. That's right. How so many people are watching right now, watching that's spreadsheets? That's a good question. Uh, what do we got here, Roy? Look oh, my word! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Look. I thought there would be like 100 people watching. You asked for data, you're getting data. So now looking at the A-team list here, mm -hmm. oh sorry, I'm at uh, 190%, so let's zoom in again. So looking at the A-team list here, Gizmos is the highest represented across all four of our lists, and then Gloomhaven. The Gizmos thing is just amazing to me. It's just amazing to me. It's like, yeah, it's a good game, sure. This is for it's, me. I just don't get the. This would not make my top three hundred. Probably I not. Think. I like it. Yeah. But wow, I was surprised. Like it's, I think it's on a low seven for me. Our gizmos is your wingspan, basically, mm. right? Like none of us put wingspan on our list. Yep. We respect it. I think it's a solid game. All that stuff. For whatever reason, gizmos is like the engine building game that Roy, Camilla, Wendy, and I just nerd out about. It's mm. great. Uh, Destinies. Destinies, I argue, is one of the examples here of some group think. You guys all played it together and had a really great experience, too. And I, the funny thing is, I, I played in at least some of those, and I didn't like it very much. It was okay. It was okay. Actually, I think I've gone down on my thought of it af after hmm. not playing it for a while, but yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward to playing that system in the Dark Quarter. That would be really cool. That, that I'm looking for, but anyway. Uh, yeah, Dune Imperium is higher on average than, or Dominion's higher on average than Dune Imperium on our, our list. Ethno shows up a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Forgotten Waters. Yeah. That's great. And so, yeah, so those are our three-way crossovers. There is one three-way crossover, which you see here uh, is actually underneath all of these twos, because these twos are highly rated across multiple people's lists, mm -hmm. like Brass and Feast for Odin. Uh, Arkham Horror Card Game Marvel Champion. Micro Macro was on three. Of I'm our actually lists. that's another one that surprised me because I enjoy that, and then I go on to the next game. Like yeah. you say, hey, I haven't even bought the sequel to it. Right. Because I, I was just kind of like, can yeah, you, it's cool. they done can that. You? Yeah. <laughs> kids effect affects itself too. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Play with. Oh, it makes a good point. Yeah, we played this with our kids and everything, so that's. Yeah, that helps. The family that kills together stays together. That's <laughs> yep. what I always say. Adrenaline's another one that's for me. I like it, but it would not make the top. I have not played it. And yet. I have like been, to applaud I've been told practically to and boo Wendy and Chris for not enjoying it as much as they should. Another one I need to play. Oh, okay. Well. You've not played Project Elite? No. I've always been like, well, okay. actively pushed away. I don't want to say I think you like it because I want to influence it. So it's no, trash. I've, I've seen people play okay. it. I'm pretty sure I would like it. All right. All right. So uh, then I have these 
deprecated tabs over here, which, you know, anyone who's worked with data like this has extra tabs and they're like, uh, I need to get rid of those, those are old. But I'm too nervous to delete them for good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so this, uh, this spreadsheet here is the year-over-year -year analysis. And so here is the 2022 raw data. Here's the 2021 raw data. You know, it's Camilla, Wendy, and I do not have lists in here. Mm -hmm. I didn't include Wendy and I's one from four years ago. We'll just over, over the there years. There is a big jump from four years. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have my list from four years ago, and it's a huge difference because, you, I mean, you can see. What, what, I'm on the people's choice, sorry. So four years ago, of my top ten, one, two, three. Three, four of them were not there. Only six of my top ten. Sure. So, looking here at the changes, uh, generally speaking, so because there's not perfect data, and there's no way to be able to do this, anything that was not on your list in 2021, I ranked at 101. Right? Whether that would have been in your 250, or whether it was a game that didn't exist like Arc Nova. So the highest change, uh, highest positive change is Arc Nova for you, obviously. Jumping That's the to your... highest change ever, with the exception of Gloomhaven jumped to number one the first year that came out. Right. Those are the only two times a game jumped all the way up to number one for me. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I, I can tell you now that Arc Nova will be in my top 100 next year. I don't know where yet, but I had not played it enough. You had sure. played it a bunch early yeah. on. I had only played it maybe once by the time that we made that list, so I did not feel comfortable putting it what on What else my is, list. what's my what's my biggest positive change after Ark Nova? Uh, probably Vagrant Song. Well, that's I also guess. new to the list. So let's, yeah. what's my biggest change that's not new to the list? Okay, well, let's see. Let's do, oh, sorry, wrong thing. Let's do this. Saw a bunch of red there, getting flashbacks to, to uh, elementary. So your first thing that was not uh, a brand new game is Beyond the Sun. Okay. Or one that you didn't put on the list before or something. Yeah, Beyond the Sun was 68 because it had just come out. I was enjoying it. I mean, it's made my top 100. I guess I should say that more than that. Right. So it went from 68 all the way up to 15. Uh, Hadara rose up a lot too, which. Hey, I, I found a game that's on your top 100 that I actively disliked, Tom. Babunk? No, on the underground. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you what. All those get. Okay, so this is interesting. Beyond the Sun, Hadara, Vabank, On the Underground, all those went up, and all those were specifically because I played them with yeah. people at both Dice Tower Retreats right. last year a lot. Mm -hmm. Sure. And in fact, these are magical athletes on that list for that same sure. reason, and they, they went up for that, that purpose. What made Port Royal jump back on your list? Uh, mostly because I forgot it in other years. <laughs> I don't know why Port Royal and, always gets and, forgotten. And the big box is coming back out. It might have brought it back into your memory. Ah, yeah, but I didn't know. I don't even know if I knew about the big box yeah. at that point. Yeah, it just. Okay, so is there a, is there a negative thing? Yeah, the so we get. Ah, oh no! So these What's are the, the worst. Terraforming the biggest Mars. Biggest drop is Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars is actually a dual hit from Ares Expedition and, Ar Nova. and Ark Nova. Yeah, yeah. Orleans. Wow, really? You fell a lot of places. Oh, man. Yeah. Look at the Glenmore 2 and Paladins are both fantastic. Again, I, I like these games. Okay, look, I actually have my numbers past 100. <laughs> um, oh, no, I didn't. I only went up to 101. Tisk. Oh, no. Tisk, tisk. Now, really quick, while we're still on new time, we're going to jump over here to the next tab, which is the, the drop offs. Games that dropped off of your list. Um, Clank, Pandemic, all of these ones are, are your legacy decision. You decided 100%, to take... 100%. I took legacies off the list, so I won't even count that. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So, Clank dropped off. Thunderstone Quest, does that also fit in that same thing? Or it, you just kind of cooled on it? It's just in the top 200. It's in the top yeah. 150. Dwellings mm -hmm. of Vale, same thing. They just drop to the top 150. They they, they kind of settle. Yeah. Um, some games come on and settle. Roll for the Galaxy. I like it a lot, but it keeps getting pushed out by race. I just keep wanting to play race. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Next yeah. versus Minions. It just kind of it's fading off. Seeing Tainted Grail. I like it a lot, but I didn't play it as much last year as I did the year before. Suburbia. There's very few games that dropped really far. Um, I'm looking down here, Root, Marvel. I wonder what's going to happen with Dream Factory. I bet it's going to come back because we're going to be playing that new edition. I wonder, the right? Studios and it only, one. I mean, it was 99 yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. So can, yeah, we can just kind of go through here really quick on, on other people's changes, mm -hmm. too. So let's look at Z's. What were his, some of his biggest changes? 
Marvel United jumping onto his list, mm -hmm. Sleeping Gods rattled at a lot of new games, but Cthulhu Death May Die went from 81 to 21. So here's the thing, that jump fair, I, I bet you something similar is going to happen with mine too. I remember playing the first couple of games of Death May Die, or at least the first game with, with Z, and I, he... I, I think this has been a grower for both he and I. We both really have grown to like that game more. I'm, I, I, I know I'm speaking for Z a little bit. Well, he bit, did but. say when he made the list that he did not look at his last year list at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I did do. I, I always don't look at it when I'm making the list, mm -hmm. but then I always compare them at the end because I want to make sure I didn't miss something, and occasionally right. I'll be like, oh, no, I missed that game. Yep. Mm. Uh, something else, get on board, which this is part of the data normalization, was let's make a bus let's route. Let's make a bus route, yeah, they're the same game. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Yinch, mm. moving on up for Z, Mission Red Planet, maybe he's you know, playing it more recently. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of these. Uh, King Domino is a big jump up, actually. That's, you know, o Origins Origins came out. is why. And King Domino Origins was, was the name on his list, once again, normalized yeah, it to yeah. King Domino because it's... They're essentially the same. Again, I want to point out here another thing, too, that people always forget. Game 101 does not suck. Right. And yeah. everyone's like, how did it fall <laughs> off your top 100? It might be at 101. And I can actually tell you my 101 game. What are the is, biggest drops for Z? My 101 like game it? is Thunderstone Quest, actually. Ah, there you go. 101. There, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. But j that doesn't mean it's bad. New games come out, they move in the list. You have to drop mm -hmm. something out by very nature. And I think people read too much into like, I agree. oh, it's, it's terrible now. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Root, Root dropped off your list, Tom, and so that doesn't mean you hate the game now. Right. Although you're wrong. Uh, Sheep and Thief. Sheep and Thief dropped 45 spaces. St. Malo, 40 spaces. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. the, a lot of these are older games that just with time. Detective City of Angels, uh, I know that that one has a limited number of cases. Sure, sure, He's sure. probably played through all, all of them, mm -hmm. and it is now kind of uh, DMing the game, yeah. GMing, running the game for the right, people. Right, but it's still right. on his top 100, yeah. which is amazing. Yep. Now looking at Z's drop-offs here, uh, his biggest drop-off was Balderdash. Mm. Gold River, uh, Quest for El Dorado, sorry, Mike. Mm, yeah, Deadline, Down Force, Just One. So yeah, so Just One was on his 2021 list. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see. I mean, uh, these games do just. Uh, let's, let's 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 examine the old man's list. All right, let's take a look at the. Uh, ah, he, uh, I didn't say I was talking about you. I knew who. I know who you're talking about. I know how this works. <laughs> That's like when you walk down the street and someone shouts, "Hey, stupid!" and you look, <laughs> and people are like, "Why are you looking? Do you think yeah. you're stupid?" I'm like, "No, I looked because you shouted, hey, right. and I was looking at you.'" Yep. Right. So Merchant's Cove, uh, wait, was that even in, are those new ones? These are new ones, yeah, so anything yeah. with a 101, right? right? those are new, okay. So Until Sleeping God. So Death Mansion. May Die. You were right, you, were you right. called it. It was, was, it was also a huge jump for me. Vindication also was new to me, so The Loop. Ah, and Marvel United, I know what happened there. Same thing happened to me, it wasn't on my list. It's because And it came on because of all that extra all content. All the extra stuff, and that, yeah. That's one of the few times I can say Kickstarter content made it made that a huge, huge of a difference. difference. Yes, it did make yeah. a huge, huge difference. I, so. I'll be honest, Mike. When you put Marvel United on your one at 100 last year, mm -hmm. I thought, okay. Yeah, and yeah. You specifically said this. It's here almost as kind of like a placeholder, placeholder because <laughs> yeah. I think it'll get better. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right. Yeah, I kind of saw where it could go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm. It really this made a big difference though, because I played. Difference. I was like, yeah, it's pretty fun. And then I got all this, like. This is amazing. Yeah, you could. It, the yeah. plug and play nature itself it's, gets at a point for me. A hundred percent. Sure. And then so uh, Ra also yeah jumped up. So what's the things that dropped here? To call is new on your list. I mean, I'm yeah. guessing that it, it, you know some of these are 101, but they're not they, new games. Right. They, they just were are new to the top and come back up. Uh, Pact Premier moved up for I'm you. I'm going to make the call. Oath is going to drop off next year. I just don't get It's going to be hard for me to get to play it. I, Absolutely. I know. And I, I'm not saying it's a bad yeah, game. I think it's, it's for that reason. It's, it's a shame. You had, uh, you had six games stay in their exact same position, oh, by the way. interesting. Including Formula E. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that may drop next year. So you're looking at your biggest drop, Rising, Rising Sun. Rising Sun, yeah. It's 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 still barely hanging into my. Is top Dinosaur Island but... because of Dinosaur World? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. no, it's fine. Yeah. Takinoko, is that because I lost the panda? <laughs> <laughs> no, Takinoko is just because it's just not one that I get to play much anymore. I played it with my kids a lot. And I'm not playing it with them anymore. Uh, Tricarion is very hard to get to the table, although I still like it a lot. QE, I'm hoping, will pop up with the, you know, if we get a chance to play that some more. 
I'm really surprised Aquatica dropped as so much as it did, but I think I had it up very high before. It was at 16, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes games settle into a good right. place. Or yeah. sometimes you just have, you play a game a lot in one year, right? and it's like, that game's amazing. Right, so which games dropped off my list? So going to you, Mike. Your biggest drop was Charterstone. Legacy game. It's hard, yeah. yeah. I mean, and that one is probably the most replayable of all legacy games. Mm -hmm. yeah. You also had Tainted Grail drop off yours. Same thing. Probably for the same reasoning. Yep. And then uh, the, you had a couple rolling rights there. Fleet. Fleet the Dice game was replaced by, in many ways, by uh, Hadrian's Wall. You paper, can see Paper uh, Tales. You can see it used to be on my top 100. That fell off. I still like it. Lords of Water Deep, I still like it. Fell off. Pandemic. Yeah. And well, once you get to the 90s. Same thing, Dream Factory. Look, same thing for me, Tom. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I don't even count the 90s when they drop off yeah. as a big deal. Because they're within a it's few. It's so close. Right, right, right. Right. All right, so then let's go over to Cool Cat Roy. Well, Roy's not here to tell us anything, so we can basically That's make right. it anything we, can we just... want. <laughs> this, this can comes flying mm -hmm. out, so it hits me in the head. Those so. are the new ones. Hmm. So Roy likes themes, Sleeping God's Destiny is Unsettled, mm -hmm. Kemet, right? Does Roy have the most new ones on his list? That's uh, an interesting question. Yeah, maybe. Let's go through this really quick. Um, wait, I would have to do... Uh, let's just actually just do if this. I have to do it, this is the first time I did Pub Meeple too, so... Count I if... Because I've also been updating and ranking every single thing on Board Game Geek so I could do this. So... Okay, so Roy has 27 brand new games. Uh, Mike has 12. Z has 29. Wow. And Tom, you have 16. Interesting. Now, these are not brand new guaranteed. Like new to your list, right? Yeah, because some of these are going to be games that, like Last Aurora for Z, was yeah, yeah. probably on there before, fell off, came back on maybe, mm -hmm. or maybe just over the years worked its way on. Yeah, yeah. So this is not a perfect representation, but... That's interesting, though. Yeah, Roy's pretty close with Z there. All right. Uh, f so, highest move up that was on his list before, Dice Throne. Marvel. Marvel, mm -hmm. more Dice Throne, Adventures. Mm -hmm. That was before Marvel, Marvel, though. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. Right, I keep thinking yeah, yeah. this is your list. Right. Yeah, Roy, yeah, because well, yeah, of the timing difference. Yep. Uh, Dominion moved up for Roy. Mm, that's because Dominion's spot. amazing. <laughs> Love Letter moved up. We had a few different versions come through the office. Actually, do you think that a newest expansion would affect your my score of Dominion? That was such a solid expansion. <laughs> it was a really solid expansion. Do, here's the funny thing is Dominion in previous years, I've always called it my, my number one favorite game. And this was the first year where I was making a list and I said, I think I'm okay letting it not be my favorite game because it's kind of, it, it's almost earned a trophy. You know what I mean? Mm. You don't keep giving a trophy over and over and over to the same thing. Just so, just because of tradition. So traditionally, it was my favorite game. So it dropped down to I think seven, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it stays in that top ten because yeah. they're still putting new good stuff out for it. Yep. Uh, Jan Miguel says, uh, "Will you share this Excel file?" Yes. We, we'll, we might clean it up a bit or whatever. We'll, yeah. we'll we'll look on our Facebook page and whatever. We'll announce when it's up. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So big drops for Roy. He's got a few games also at the same place. Marvel Champions, no surprise. War of the mm -hmm. Ring, not a surprise. Yep. Only time an Android Netrunner. Android Netrunner is clenching that 82 yeah, spot, Roy. Right. You know, I didn't know that they're making that. A new company has that I now. Didn't. Messing with I it. Saw that it's video at UK about Games Expo. Yeah. Really? So, yeah. Nexus. It, no, it's a. It's not called Nexus. The company making yeah. it. It's not Nexus. It's something else. Okay. So looking at Roy's drops here, he doesn't have as big a drops as mm. other people, but Crossfire. Roy is consistent. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> Sheriff Nottingham! Yeah, he Shit. hates that game. <laughs> <laughs> Journey, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's hard well, to yeah, keep getting that game to the campaign. table. Crossfire is, you know, we don't we haven't played as many social deduction games over the last few right, years. Right, right, right. Let's fair. see the drop-offs on Roy. All right, so Roy, drop-offs. So we we addressed that was a mistake. Yes. Yeah, Look we, at that big eighty-three. Obviously, that was <laughs> I, meant to be there. <laughs> All right, but then coming Nis, over here and uh, Nisei and I. You could gold, huh? All right. On oh, Sukiyumi. Sukiyumi, yeah. Okay. Tiny yeah. at the Kingdoms, Pandemic, Pitch Car, Star Trek Ascendancy. It's hard to keep that many of those big epic mm -hmm. long games, and Roy has plenty. 
you know, he's not missing representation of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've never played a Star Trek Ascendancy, though. You never will. Nah. It's very possible. Yeah. It's, I mean, you have to find people to teach it to you. It's, it's like a less players Twilight Imperium. Sure. It's extremely lucky. Like, extremely lucky. Extremely lucky, right? And it's also... That's what I'm looking for out of a very, very long game. <laughs> <laughs> and the last of the year of year analysis here is going to be the people's choice. Uh, that, this, to me, the people's choice is the most static data because that's not affected by... Oh, I just happen to play this game a lot this right, year. Right, so you'll yeah. see the fewest changes in it. 18. You see the fewest new ones added to it. I mean, there's 18, but most of them are ranked near the bottom. There's very few entries in the top. That just okay. shoot up to the top because... Like, Arnak shot up, but even that, I believe, was... Wait until it was next almost year. on the list of Wait until next year. year when you see Ark Nova. That's going to wreck everything. Sure. So now we'll let's see. look. We'll see. Actually, I can be, tell you what's the be like highest one on there. Ark... Um, Lost Ruins of Arnak the year before was 248. I actually do have the People's Choice all the way down. Yeah. And because the other, that was the uh, well, Dune because Imperium. Well, that, because that's actually voted on by people. Dune Imperium was 178 the previous year. Oh, interesting. Uh, Marvel United noodly. was not on the People's Choice the previous year. Neither was Crew. Well, Mission Deep Sea didn't exist. That's true. Uh, Nidavellir was also... Nidavellir did not have a very wide release it did initially. Not. When we played it and when we reviewed it, it was not in wide release yet. But Hachette is working hard to get that out there. And a new expansion has been released. I just one. was reading about that today. <laughs> gods and Giants. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Okay. That's not what it's called, but there are Gods Terraforming and Giants. Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. Right. Uh, new. Cascadia, new. Uh, oh. Calico was actually 141. Mm. Shot up to uh, 76, although I suspect that one will go down. Uh, Dwellings of Elderbell was 145, went to 70. I'm calling it that one will also drop out. And, I, and I, no, I'll I you, disagree I, because it's being more. It's going to be more people are going to get a chance to play it. It's they being are getting released. a second one. Yeah, oh, they are releasing yes, one. They're getting yes. a second printing. The of second it. printing is coming soon. I stand by what I said. I think it will happen. I think it was cool. It was neat. I think. It's not going to hold people's... I think it'll drop places, but, I mean, it's sitting at yeah, 70. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I obviously think it's a really special game. The thing that I think could pull from it is if people... He's, he's basically releasing that game in space, Andromeda's Edge, and that might pull people away if they like Who's that. Who's releasing it? Peter is? I believe it's coming, yeah. I think uh, Cardboard Ooh. Alchemy is going to be doing it. All right. yeah. huh. Nemesis went from 163 to 86. Mm. That's another one that's more available now. I will also, well, also the new Nemesis came out. Sure. And con oh, assuming yeah. we normalize them next year, which we probably will, the Nemesis uh, lockdown, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm going to make the call that Nemesis might break top 50. The yes. people who love Nemesis love they it love with it a, a burning passion. And, and I think it has a wider appeal than a lot of people realized, yeah. All right, so what dropped off the people's list? Oh, what was the the highest? Dixit was the highest game that moved up that is not a new game. Well, let That's me see where that is. What, what number is it? It, uh, it is this year 57. It was Rezarcon 90 Mike. before. What's that? Look at that Rezarcon. <laughs> Trash. It was 90, Where's and the year before it was okay. 90, it was 72, and 59, and 49, and 39, and 29, and 22, 25, 28. So it had this slow decline. It came on at 26, mm -hmm. and it, it stabilized for a while, then slowly declined all the way to 90, and now it's at 57. I don't know. that. that that's a weird that's one. That's a weird one. That is too. a weird one. Dixit has, yeah, it just sticks. Maybe you can play it on Zoom or something. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. That'd be tricky because they wouldn't have to have cards. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, but I guess it was a good year for Dixit. Hooray. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, there's the, there's the, there's a lot of the same. That's Again, that's going to happen more with sure. the people's choice. Yeah, so you can see a lot of stability, especially in the higher up picks. And well, stuff. there's not a lot of change in the people's choice number ones. So, yeah. like, Wingspan has had it now two years in a row. Um, Scythe had it three years in a row before that. Mm -hmm. And then one, two, three, four, four years in a row, Pandemic had it. And then the two years before that was Dominion. Mm, sure. And all those games are still on the list. They're all still fairly high. The lowest is Dominion at 22. Dixit yeah. was not combined with Stella. Stella wasn't. I would not be surprised if Wingspan is number one again this year, although a new one could break on. I'm... It could. I think Dune Imperium could hit it. Yeah. I may be overestimating how popular I think Ark Nova is going to be. I, to me, Ark Nova feels like oh, not quite to Wingspan, but it feels like yeah, it's getting Wingspan, close. Yeah, but Wingspan's more approachable. It does have a it wider does, appeal. It does, yeah. 
All right. So the biggest drops in the people's uh, Teotihuacan. Mm -hmm. Dinosaur Island, I feel like I would understand, right? Dinosaur World. Dinosaur World, could I think, yeah. be moving up. Teotihuacan's interesting. There's a lot of tea games, so yeah. hard to keep up with it all. Cartographers had a big I'm drop. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the, the call. Cartographers has a slight uptick. Because they're releasing lots of expansions for and various things. And things like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not a like I said, there's less volatility. I think you're not mm -hmm. seeing as big of drops and stuff here, but right. you're no, still because it's more them. than one data point. Yeah, absolutely. So what fell off? What fell off the people's choice? That's over here, this side. Uh, the first one is Zulkin. Okay, gone. Uh, that's well, pretty wild to me. Uh, what, what number? What number was it last year? Fifty-one. Fifty. It's yeah. It, it was fifty-one last year. Well, I'll be fine. Okay, it's 103. Yeah. 103. Okay. Yeah. Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter, I can understand. We've kind of talked about it. Game yep. has a great... It lasts for a while, and it's great, but you start Dead to kind of play it out. Dead of Winter had a much bigger drop. I am not finding so it dropped, on there. It just has to drop 35. It was 66, so it should be at like... Well, it, with this, it, it dropped 35 spaces as in 2101, because that's the... I had to uh, pick I, a number I that see. it I'm not I even see. seeing Dead of Winter on here. Okay. And it, this is going to 250 or something, or one? Well, no, it's got to be on here because I have these in order. Um... Huh, that's weird. It should have showed up somewhere in there. Well, maybe I'm just not reading it. What number did you say it was? Uh, oh, there it is. 66. It dropped to, sorry, dropped to 135. Okay. 135, okay. It was 66. Uh, Istanbul, through the ages. Yeah, that, that's, through the mm -hmm. ages is such a good but difficult to table game. Right. Yeah, then once you go below that, I'm not surprised they're in the 80s. You know, yeah, they're, gonna, yeah. they're gonna drop off. Right. Eldritch Horror is going to drop off next year, I think. Just yep. because it's not in print anymore, and there's other things coming around. Oh, it's, right. it's not in print anymore, huh? Well, I don't think so. That would make sense. But... All right. All right. Well, there you go. Any other interesting things you wanna... Well, we haven't done the... Uh, oh, have we did the games with the most crossovers? I don't think we did that. Yeah, yeah, that was on the other list. Uh, boom. Games with the most crossovers, as in like... The high score. Oh, okay, we, uh, we did look at this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, so, before we shut down here, folks, do you have any questions with uh, mathematical things that we can make Chris quick mm. type into formulas as fast as he can? <laughs> um... Well, while we're at it, I'll tell you the highest people's choice that was on when we started in 2011 is Seven Wonders. That came on at four wow. and is now 17. Okay. Pandemic wow. came on at six and is now 18. Ticket to Ride came on at eight and is now 19. And Dominion came on at one and is now 22. Mm. Those are the four highest games after that. Carcassonne still on the list. <laughs> this is funny. A Race for the Galaxy. These are some... Um, Agricolo dropped from 2 to 54, but yeah. still on the list. Dixit, Power Grid, Ticket to Ride Europe, Twilight Struggle, La Hav. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, Stone Age, Catan, and War of the Ring. Those are all the ones that are still on. How many of the 450 games for 2020 are new? We didn't do date information. We didn't do yeah, date. That would be... Also Someone's mentioning publishers. We didn't, I mean, but I, I don't know how. Date is one thing. I yeah. think at some point we might do date entry because I think that'd be interesting. I think it'd be very Publishers is really hard because so many games have multiple publishers. What game on the Board Game Geek Top 100 is on nobody's list? That would, you know. Oh, well, that. Uh, Gaia okay. Project, I'm going to guess, is the highest one, right? Yeah. Well, let me pull it up here. I'm going to pull up Board Game Geek. We'll browse by all board games. All right, so we got Gloomhaven, Pandemic, Brass Birmingham, Terraforming Mars, Gloomhaven, Twilight Imperium, Star Wars Rebellion, which technically is on Roy's, Gaia Project, yeah, number eight. And then... It's on the people's. Oh, on the people's. Oh, that's a good... Th yeah, let's look for one that's not on any of the lists. Um, Through the ages, I'm going to guess. Did that fall off? That did fall off. Did Seven right? Wonders Duel make anyone's list? Yeah, of course. It would have made Z's list, for sure. Through the ages oh is the highest one that's on nobody's list. You've had it on your list in the past, Tom. It fell off from Make last the year. App. I wonder how much the app is affecting that. How do you know Three Ages is the highest one here, though? What, uh, on Board Game Geek. Oh, you pulled that up. I pulled it up, yeah. Oh, it's at 11. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I just went, and my eyes rolled right over it. But let me look at the other ones in the top 100 here. Um, Great Western Trail was on nobody's list. Oh, good. Everybody can see my writings here. Yeah, I gave Great Western Trail a four. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That surprises me, actually, Chris, that you... I've tried it like three different times, and I've not... Pax Mimir, was that on your list, Mike? It was on Mike's, yeah. Okay. On Mars, was that on yours, Chris? It was on, yeah. It All right. Probably yours on Kingdom Death right? Monster maybe is pretty high rated, and that was on none of our lists, yeah, including yeah. People's Choice. Um, I don't think even after us playing it, it's ever going to make it. It's not making my on list. On anyone's list. What are the most popular word or words <laughs> in game titles? Dune. Because, uh, but yeah, yeah. If, if you take out articles, <laughs> mm -hmm. Dune. Uh, well, let me see. I'm trying to think of another. Uh, um, how about. S I'm, I'm looking at these words. End. How many ends are in there? There's A on Zen, but I mean, is there any other ends? Ledge ends of a drift <laughs> system. <laughs> oh, legend, actually. Legend, okay. Marvel Legendary, that doesn't count. Western, Western Legends. Legends. I was on two people's list. Another Marvel Legendary, Western Legends, I a Legend of a Drift System. Blue I would Moon go with Legends, because we have Blue Moon Legends. Sea, sea of Legends. Sea of Legends, yeah. Legends. Mm. Yeah, but I... Also, a deluxe question. version. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love Great Western Trail either, Bonnie. I think it's just okay at best. And I feel like we're kind of anomalies in yeah. that because we I, I love a lot of Alexander Pfister games. Right. Two of his are in my top ten. Yeah. So It would be fun to do even more with this if we had the data, but even the data, we couldn't just pull it from Board Game Geek because I actually right. disagree with some of the way games are ranked. Like, we couldn't say how many family games are in it because the, sometimes they say games family. I'm like, nah. Yeah. No, not it's family. too heavy or, or people argue it's too light or the whatever. Only, I, year published is a good data that point that's pretty solid, even though that's not always correct, too. Well, and it right. also, it's not only correct, not always correct, it's also can be have second editions, and, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of Number skew of that. Number of players, right. time. There's a lot of things we could do with this in weight. the future. I know you like that weight rating. <laughs> put the Board Game Geek rating in there. All right, well, thanks for Chris for putting this all together. Like we said, we'll put this up at some point to let you all mess with it. And if someone else wants to add in all the other data, Be go to guess. town, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be lovely. I will not. <laughs> I'm looking a little... This, I noticed that my shirt here has that... What's that effect called on uh, camera where the lines... Yeah. It's, well, it's horizontal twisted. stripes also are not always the most flattering. Hi hip so. Hypnosis. Mm -hmm. This is basically Virgo. the Hamburger shirt. That's right. <laughs> um, a little thinner stripes. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the it's the weekend here. Well, we got lots of stuff to do here yet. We're working on Dice Tower East. We are working on getting a library ready. We are eating lunch at some point. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Chris Yee. Who did all